Well, hello, superhero. Welcome to the last episode of our three-part audio series on being powerful. Today, Louise and I are going deep into generational beliefs and how they can affect your permission to be powerful. We're talking about your identity and how acting from your future power identity can maximize results. Let's get started, shall we? Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful Podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tuttick, your medical herbalist and high-performance coach. So, hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy. It's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul-centered joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose, and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So, hey, let's get started, shall we? Hello and welcome back to our secret audio series. Not so secret now because you're obviously perceiving it. Um, and I am Louise and I am with... Tracy! And uh, we'd like to go into this final audio and talk to you about how power and being powerful is a work in progress. Give you a bit of our own personal experience. Um, and we're going to start off with talking about how generational beliefs are fundamental in how we go about reclaiming some of our power um and we talked about it very very briefly in the last episode so how do you perceive that how generational beliefs are affecting us now for me so generational beliefs are well first of all they're these sort of guiding principles that we're not necessarily aware of that we have been taught by our parents or the people who were our primary caretakers. They in turn were taught by their parents or their primary caretakers and so on and so forth, you know, back across mm -hmm. the generations. And it's interesting because often when we first become aware of these, you and I like, oh, mom, oh, dad, how could you do that to me? You know, and all that good stuff. But, you know, the truth of the matter is that um, our parents programmed us just as their parents programmed them because they want nothing more than for their babies to be safe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like your parent programs you to not put your little hand on the hot element on the stove, or they program you to look both ways before you cross the road, sometimes, accidentally, they're programming you to not speak your truth, mm -hmm. to not be seen, to not be powerful because... It might be life-threatening even you know when you're looking back across history as you know I'm a bit of a history fan and you look at how um, power was used back in like even if you're looking in you know Elizabethan times you know the times of Henry VIII and Boleyn Elizabeth the first there was two ways to to grab power and the families needed to grab that power in order to ensure survival essentially mm -hmm. You either grab that power through force or through being wily and attractive. Mm -hmm. And it was a high stakes game. So, you know, if you got it wrong, you could ultimately lose your head. Your family could lose their livelihood. Um, and that was the end of, of that family lineage. So, you know, this generational idea about not being seen and playing it safe, because of course that's the other option in terms of, you know, ensuring survival. It's a very strongly held belief, and it's also an unconscious belief. Mm. So when we're, you know, when we're starting our business, one of the things that's going to make it really hard to succeed in business is a fear of being seen, a fear of speaking out, a fear of being powerful, of owning your truth. And part of this comes from that programming that we've received, which is in order for us to be powerful, we need to take it from someone else. Mm. I love that. You know, as, as we talked about when we opened this audio series for us, being powerful is our natural birthright. It's who we are. Mm -hmm. And we can be powerful without diminishing someone else's power. Yeah. So that's I, what it means to me. How about you? Yeah, I think you're right. And I think, you know, there's two things that I've now learned differently because sort of talking about generational beliefs, we want to give you permission to actually not let them define your pathway. Mm. So... I do believe in limiting beliefs. However, the more I do this work, the more power I believe we have 
in making conscious decisions. We can be aware of those beliefs, but the power lies in us saying, I see them, but they will not define me. Yeah. And I see a lot of people kind of verbalizing their limiting beliefs, being very aware of them and consciously saying, until this is gone, I know I can't fulfill my best self. So yeah. I, I kind of want to debunk that a little bit. I think it's very helpful to have those removed. I really do. And, I, and for me personally, going through some quite intense coaching to remove those, I definitely think set me off on a whole new trajectory. Um, mm. But combining those with powerful new decisions is the way it really is the, the quickest way forward. But when we talk about those generational beliefs as well, there's kind of like a couple of things is you said that they get sort of implanted unconsciously. And mm. one of those things means that actually we don't know how we give meaning to that. So as an example, I'm a twin. So I was brought up in exactly the same way as my twin sister. There was not, not you know, everything was the same. We even, we were dressed the same. We went to, in the same classes till we were like 13 years old. And yet we have very different perceptions of things. So how we give meaning Maybe it's a soulful thing and, and our soul takes that meaning to learn it. I don't know. But, but ultimately, mm. you know, we, we then get a choice to reframe that. The other thing about those beliefs is I think what I wanted to, uh, for us to be able to do in this series was to be able to help people change the way they think, to yeah. see a different perception. So when it comes to generational beliefs, we could actually, as a way to question them, maybe just change the context. So mm. what if we experience that in a different time? So you've talked about Elizabethan times. I'm really, really pants at history. So I can't even get involved in that conversation. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, and, uh, but, you know, but just in terms of a belief that we have here in this country would be very different if you came from the Amazon rainforest. You know, yeah. something in Europe is still different to the UK. You know, that, and, and sometimes we can just change the location we can change the, the, the time, we can change the gender, we, and we get suddenly a whole different belief system. Yeah. I think now that an awareness of the generational beliefs, so another past life vision that I had, um, I was a suffragette. Did you not know? I don't think I told you that. And so I was like, oh, that's another reason why I don't really like speaking about what I believe in, because I get beaten for it. Um, <laughs> because it came up a couple of times. Um, so I think our power lies now in the fact that we have this huge energetic awareness of our identities being all time space, right? From generations, you know, from, from different areas. We are holographic, if you like. So we are not just in our physical body, we are everywhere. And mm -hmm. us business women, we're freaking amazing at understanding what alignment feels like, when we know we're not being our best selves. And so to be able to recognize the beliefs, but not to define ourselves by them and to consciously make a new decision. Yeah. For me, that's the start of where the power really starts to ramp up. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, part of that is also taking action despite mm. what the belief may be. Um, and um, Jen McLean has a wonderful turn of phrase where you know, when your mind's going off, oh, no, but you can't do this, you can't do that, or oh, it wouldn't be safe to do that, how do we do that, what do we do that, if, but, if, but, and all of that. <laughs> and, um, and she just has this phrase where she says, thank you, beautiful mind. Thank you for keeping me safe. I appreciate you, and I'm grateful, but I've got this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and play over here. I love that. I love, I love that. that. I, yeah. and, and I spoke some joke in the last episode about the, the woman that really, I feel she really saved me from a breakdown. And, um, and I don't think if it was for her, I don't think I'd still be in business. Um, but I remember um, one of the first ways that I started to reclaim the power of owning myself, because there's a power we haven't really talked about, just being mm -hmm. okay with who you are and not, yeah. not belittling yourself with conversations about not being enough. And I remember my girls, so we're going back to about 2015. Um, so my girls were quite small, then they would go off to school. And I remember so many mornings standing at the kitchen sink and washing up and the voices would start. And I would, in the end, I used to have conversations with them, usually with a lot of swear words telling them where to go put themselves. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and I would literally look over my shoulder and go, F you, I don't need to hear this. You, you know, you don't belong to me. Mm. I did that for weeks and weeks and weeks. 
because it was the only way that I could separate my identity from the conversations in my head. Mm. And it's just reminded me of a, of a, a YouTube clip actually I just shared with my, uh, my masterminders. And um, he, the thing was the same. Like if you are, if you're a visual person, find a way to see yourself and then put these conversations outside of you. So maybe put them in a bucket or a bin or a balloon and send them away or put them on a train or just mm. see them coming out of you and being separate from you because that's how our mind works. Mm. It's creating a new picture in our head that creates new meaning. Probably one of yeah. the quickest and easiest ways to do that. So I think generational beliefs are big. I also believe it is part of our, I don't know whether, whether to use the word purpose or duty, I think when we set up in business, we take on this um, unspoken vow that actually we are changing the course of time and showing our children and our future generations what's possible when you mm. really, when you believe in yourself and you won't, you won't take no for an answer and you develop that courage and that resilience, but we are literally changing the world at a fundamental conscious level. Um, yeah. But it's like when Roger Bannister ran that four minute mile, wasn't it? I mean, before that, they were like, you can't do that. You're crazy. You'll die. Mm -hmm. And he runs a minute mile. And then within the next six years, was it three or four other people had run a four Oh, it's crazy. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. Like literally the next day, I think somebody actually smashed it. Yeah. Um, and I'm reading um, Shoe Dog at the moment, written by the guy that developed Nike. Oh, man, what a book. You know, this <laughs> guy started with $50. He... First of all, the book is so, so well written. I'm quite blown away by it, the way that he writes. But ultimately, what comes across to me all the time was his passion for running. He was like Forrest Gump, but he made trainers in a way. It was just his passion just kept him going. And he went through some really, really, really hard times. And the thing that really made me chuckle, he talked about they were doing this big kind of like an event, you know, like a big fair thing. And mm. you added us, we're going to be there, and Reebok, we're going to be there, and all these other big things. And they'd change suppliers so that the trainers would be made somewhere in Japan. And he said, we had all these pyramids of orange boxes. Now, you'd think that he had this amazing marketing team that developed, you know, like the Nike tick and, you know, the, and the coloring. And he was like, and as the story came out, he chose orange because he just figured it was the brightest color in the, in the rainbow and everybody else had blue and white. So why not, not, why not go orange? Mm -hmm. and, and the Nike tick was uh, designed by a, a college student that just wanted a bit of extra cash. And mm -hmm. uh, they called it a whoosh. And somebody said, why? And, and they hadn't even thought of it. They just had to make it up on the spot. And he turned around and said, well, that's the sound of me running past you in my Nikes. Oh, nice. Right? Just yeah. so let's give ourselves permission to just sometimes go with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> like if you want an orange box, have an orange box. If, if the, if the logo looks pretty, let it be pretty. I, I just had, to, I kind of had to share that. Um, I love that. Let the muse plant the seed. Oh, I just, it's beautiful. Um, so yes, we can be aware of our generational beliefs, but we don't have to let that, oh, I'm getting, um, we don't have to let that be like ivy. So that it kind of, it wraps around yeah. us and strangulates what we're capable of doing now. We, you know, we have to get that whole, we have to get the secateurs out and the shears and start to breathe again and you know it's like when you see it in Disney movies and they cut that kind of stuff back the whole thing dies well mm. when we do that for ourselves we're doing it for people that follow us you know we're breaking free so that they can see something different and oh. depending on how you feel about time and space people who've gone before you yeah yeah, yeah. Um, we don't need to let these generational beliefs be our guiding force we have yeah. a choice yeah and and I think um you know obviously we've said that the power comes in both the subconscious work and the conscious, you know, movement forward. But one of the, the, the work that I continue to do on myself on, on a pretty regular basis is to just go back and have a wander down my timeline and find a younger version of myself and say, Hey, what did you need that I didn't give you? Nice. You know, and just have a conversation or sometimes she's the, especially when I go back to the very young child, she's the one that says to me, like, I don't understand why you stopped believing. Oh. You know, I don't understand when we stopped having fun, when things became, you know, and that's the thing, isn't it? When you're younger, you know, you live for those school holidays and you, you positively expect 
I'm guessing if you've had a privilege of having a nice upbringing, because I know a lot of people don't, but you know, you, every day's, every day's fun. You know, you go out mm. and you play after school. And at, what, at what point did we stop that? And equally so, we talked about future identity in the last one and calling in that version of yourself mm. and asking yourself or asking her, what's the next thing for me to step into this power? Mm. Because we talked, we, we wanted to talk about today about how um, this, this journey is one that requires time. It's not an instant change because there's lots of lots of things that need to happen along the way yeah baby so, step talk to us then about um in your experience like how how looking back can you see your timeline journey of stepping more back into your power i think when i look back across it um the fact that we're having this conversation today about being powerful says it all really mm -hmm. because even like mm, a year or two ago, I would never have been as bold. Mm -hmm. My words back then never have been as bold as to have a conversation about power. I mean, I couldn't even say the word when we were at HPA. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's amazing. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's like, it's, for me, it's like power du jour, you know, power of the day, mm -hmm. because my ideas around it are constantly changing, constantly evolving. Um, the more conversations we have, um, the more I work on myself to try and understand it and try and unfold it and unpack it, um, the more it changes. But it's interesting because even just, you know, when we started posting on social media about being powerful, I felt a lot of resistance to that. I really, like, I really did not want to do it. And I had to give myself a jolly good talking to, um, to uh, in order to do it, because I was like, who am I to talk about that? You know, I'm just from New Zealand. I, I don't know anything about that sort of stuff. You know, oh, no, I don't want to do that. You know, and that resistance was right up in my face. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to do it anyway. I remember I posted that first post and I literally held my breath. I was expecting like this whole wave of how could you, you know, and all of my thoughts playing back at me. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. What do you know? <laughs> and so I was like, okay, let's post some more. So, you know, I started having that conversation, being more public about it. And, you know, some people didn't like it. Some people were like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah, let's talk about that. And what I found was that the more I made myself do it, the more I moved through that resistance, the less resistance I felt in relation to that. And then the more I was able to move on to something else that I found resistance in so that I could move that and find less resistance in moving through that. And it's only through taking those little steps and moving through those different gateways. You know, we talk about your business being the gateway to your power. It's only by having that just that brief moment of courage and just going, you know what, I'm scared of this. Mm -hmm. I, I love that and it's okay. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And I think that we can become more powerful. Yeah. I think, you know, speaking to the business aspect as well is there are so many could do, should do's, would do's and all that, that we can yeah. get our knickers in a twist about what works for us. And I think there is um, value in obviously doing what, what works um, but also maybe you might want to tweak it to suit your energy or set up, you know, an attention before you do that work. I know for exist, for example, I get a lot of resistance about kind of email automations and selling via email. Mm. And, you know, it's one of the best ways and most productive ways to, to make money. And you can choose to feel like a sleeve bag or you can choose to feel like you are delivering value that you have a service to offer that you, know, you want to automate things because, well, why wouldn't you? Because it's time freedom. So it, it, I think one of the things that's coming up over and over again in this audio is that there is a lot of power reclaimed when we choose the meaning. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, so reclaiming the meaning that you give something rather than buying it into somebody else's meaning of sales automations or whatever, um, mm. you know, there is definite power in that because... I'm, I'm pretty sure we all want time freedom. I don't know about mm. you. I love what I do a lot. I don't want to mm. be doing it 24 seven because it really hacks my husband off. Um, 
but you know and it would be nice to say okay that I, I can go away for a week and I can you know and I can completely switch off and things are still working I'm still serving my community I'm still being a different you know you might go away and write a book as an example yeah. you know or you might go away for a month and, and do create content but you can do that anywhere in the world yeah. but also the freedom to express yourself fully so if you want to go and live in different communities around the world or if you want to go and volunteer with Greenpeace for a couple of months you know you, all that stuff requires that you have the backup to keep running your business outside of where you are so I would just probably a little bit off tangent but I would like to land here that one of the things I'm really passionate about teaching my clients now is think like a business owner from the start mm. you know raise your ambition to think bigger than you possibly could think right now I'm not talking you have to be like Steve Jobs yet but I'm saying, think about your automation. Think about online things that you can sell. Think about how you show up for yourself. Like, be the, the CEO now. Don't wait. Because if you wait, that time never comes. Um, yeah. there's, you know, you'll just get yourself a bit discombobulated. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so sort of reclaiming, reclaiming meaning and, sort of, and gaining purpose from that. Um, so we talk, there's a lot of P's that come up when we talk about our power. And mm. we were talking between audios and we talked about power, perception, purpose, passion, and profit. <laughs> is, that, is that the new seven P's? We've got the seven it's P's. We can, we, we can change that. So yeah. um, what we talked about there, I can't just touch on that as well, is that we can change our perception by giving new meaning. So the new, a new perception of our identity and a new perception of our ambition when we very first started coaching and you was really in resistance to this magic that you've got, like I felt the magic in you probably not. I probably didn't feel it at HPC because I didn't know you that well, but as we started, to coach, cover. you yeah, you was like witchy poo, but I couldn't see it. <laughs> and then as you started to share stuff with me, like I could feel your power. And this is, I wanted to share with people how, how connected we are. We were mm. coaching the other week. And I said something to Tracy and I felt your physical reaction before you felt it. Yeah. And Tracy went, yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not getting that. And then she went, oh my God, I'm getting that. <laughs> it was really bizarre. And I'm like, take it back, take it back. Um, That's how you finally honed your superpower is. <laughs> um, but I, you're, for me, you're, and I have to call it magic because it feels like magic to me. Um, it's palpable from the other side of the world. Right? And you was really adamant about hiding that away. And I said, well, of course you're hiding it away because you have been persecuted for it in the past, going back to generational belief systems. Yeah. Um, if you were now coming from a place of how you want to be perceived by future generations, what does your future identity look like? So my future identity is, it's interesting, it's kind of, well, it's kind of, it's those core things that I am now 10 times. Mm. So, so for me, uh, the identity that I love the most is this concept of a joyful person who wants to make just a little bit of difference in the world. Mm. You know, I want people to be happy and healthy and to be living their best life. Mm -hmm. And when I look at my future identity, it's the same. It's just more. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's something that Brendan teaches us a lot, isn't he? Or doesn't he? He says, as an example, like, if you were going to be 10 times more productive, then what? If you were going to be 10 times more courageous, then what? Because here's the thing, and I'm going to come back to it over and over and over again. If we keep asking ourselves the same questions, we're going to keep getting the same answers. If we get the same answers, we'll do the same actions. The question is to challenge our internal conversation to elicit a different response to achieve a different outcome. Mm. So when we say, okay, that's great, but what if, what if you had three times or 30 times more belief in your ability, then what? And you'd go, well, I would. Okay, then that's your game plan. <laughs> that's clarity. What would you, yeah. What, what would you, would you do? what would you do? What would I do? I'd probably rest more. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have my holiday. Um, so, it, so if I was what? If I was if I was thirty times more what? Thirty times more. Insert your future identity here. Okay. 
I would, I'll be honest, I would be, um, I would have really honed in on my, um, what's important. Um, mm. I get so fired up by what I do and my head sometimes feels like a pinball machine. Mm. Um, you know, and there's balls bouncing all over the place, like and the lights are going off and, you know, the flickers are flicking. Um, but I would be, I would be much more visible, like outside of the realm of social media, um, on much, much bigger platforms. Um, and I would probably just be, I don't know if I could talk any more passionately. Um, but I would, I think I would want to speak on a bigger platform about how I think that business owners can absolutely transform their business and their life by doing these things and getting into alignment. Um, mm. I, yeah, and I'd write the book, but I'd need to be constant. I'd need to concentrate. I have more concentration. That's what I'd have Tracy. I'd have more yeah. concentration. I'd like, um, let's dream into the, Oh, okay. Yeah. So slip, um, step into the slipstream of alignment. There we go. So I should probably explain that now. Um, well, actually, let's save that because we're going to, um, I'll put that, I'll put a note to myself, slipstream, because I think that will come into a second. So what Tracy and I discussed in between our episodes was that there's this kind of, um, this step-by-step -step process and we see it as the, we start taking back or owning, reclaiming, discovering, unearthing, whatever word you want to use, we start coming back to our sense of power. And we talked about that. As we do that, our perception of our identity and our ambition changes. Suddenly, we're asking questions that deliver us a bigger vision of our life or a bigger vision of how we, how we show up. And it can be, you know what, you, sometimes you don't even know it until you're doing it. So I, I went traveling when I left school. I was 19 and I left and I went traveling around the world for about 18 months. And then, you know, life happened and I had a couple of kids and I got scared of flying and Traveling was absolutely no longer in my arena. Number one, I didn't ever have any money. Number two, I was a single parent with two children. So that kind of just finished it for me. But literally going to Arizona in November last year and with the girl that I was with, we were laying by the pool on a Sunday afternoon getting ready for the event to start on the Monday. And I was like, oh, what? how have I just locked this part off from me that desires this connection and this exploration so much? I just, I shut her down. Right. So now the, the bigger, the bigger ambition, a bigger identity of me is somebody that goes off and, and tries things and experiences new things and, and, you know, travel. So nice. We then talked about, and we had sort of two different ways of this working. So once you've changed that perception and your identity and your ambition increases, we talked about how we are, we can then reclaim purpose. And you talked really interestingly about like how purpose doesn't have to be this big thing. Can, you just, can we talk a bit more about that? Yeah, sometimes we get sidetracked. We think we have to have this ginormous purpose that defines our life, defines our everything. And it's a really clever way of avoiding doing what it is that we came here to do. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, no, I can't start my business because I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm here to do. But actually, maybe your purpose is just for today. Mm -hmm. What if today you were just focused on what's my purpose for today? My purpose today is to make a stranger laugh. Mm -hmm. My purpose today is to say thank you to the bus driver. Mm -hmm. My purpose today is to go live on Facebook and talk about something that really matters to me. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't need to be this big, ginormous, overwhelming purpose and we, you know, where we get so so sort of caught up with defining the perfect purpose that we forget to do the purpose. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think you're absolutely right that the one thing that, that stopped me for a long time and that I still see stopping a lot of other women is I don't have purpose. I don't have clarity. Mm. And we've just given you permission to stay alert to clarity and purpose on a minute by minute basis. So coming into um, that alignment. So let me share with you here what I share with my clients and one of the primary things I teach them to do. Um, I see there being two pathways. And one pathway is swimming upstream. Okay, so it feels, and, it, and, and there's a pretty strong current when we're swimming upstream. Mm. And um, we are subject to the fear conversations, to the gremlins in our heads. We're probably 
heavily in comparison, uh, believing that we're not doing enough and it doesn't look pretty enough and our message isn't clear enough and we're not blah, blah, anything enough, insert there. And um, we can still, by, through a series of strategies, reach an outcome, but I don't think it's in a way that serves our highest self, our highest expression and the joy that I think we're born for. If we sidestep into the slipstream of alignment, what that means is that you have taught yourself how to step out of the upstream, get into the flow, connect to the truth of, of who you are and what you're capable of as a universal creation, right? Forget that you're a human being, but as a universal creation. And actually, when you do that, and you, there's a few things in this slipstream. We've got a lot of faith. We've got a lot of courage and we've got a lot of commitment to be now then mm. whoosh like we just we are in that that slipstream we're just off and i believe for most of us we're some of us are, are heavily in upstream and we might periodically step into alignment i think there's a lot of people kind of middle of the road but even when we're in the slipstream of alignment we can still get out of it we can still give in to anxieties and we can still get into that conversation you know, full moons and retrogrades and stuff tend to mess up the head a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, or comparison. But for me, that slipstream of alignment is the most perfect place to create from. So that's what I wanted to share with that one. But so you said, and you also said before that the purpose is a byproduct, not something that we search for. We get mm -hmm. the purpose by being more. Can you just explain that just a little bit more? It's one of the things that came through when I was meditating on being powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, the key message that came through for me was, how can I be more so I can serve more? Mm, I love that. And the idea is that by focusing on being my best me, I can't help but be my naturally authentic, powerful self. Mm. I but think more it changes the focus on mm -hmm. being poor rather yeah. than being powerful for powerful sake. This is so true. I remember um, having a little fist bump party by myself once because I just kind of really anchored into my framework of, you know, be who you need to be to do the things you need to do to have the things you want to have and mm. realize that every action should be carried on the back of a powerful intention because action alone will get you there but intention is a thing that gives it meaning. Oh, I'm on a roll today. Thank you, universe. Uh, uh, I know. Totally don't, got no idea what I just said, but I know it was good. Um, <laughs> good. It was like supercharged. <laughs> so um, then this is what happens when you and I get together. I'm, um, you know. <laughs> um, but it's, um, and I was out walking the dog and I'm really blessed. I've got a beautiful walk across the fields at, at the end of my road. And mm. I was listening to Oprah and Oprah in her, amazing voice just said mm -hmm. there is no doing without being first and I'm like shit she stole my line but <laughs> it, it was that whole thing of you know we're all saying the same message in our own way and we experience it in a different way but it yeah. has transformed the way that I feel by choosing what my purpose is like you said like on a daily basis particularly when I'm having anxious thoughts like yeah. okay so how can I bring joy today how can I be in appreciation today? And I've got my own journal thing. And I've, it says here, um, this week's personal mantra for success. And even for this week, as I wrote this out this morning, that mantra is my level of success is first a feeling. Nice. It's not in an attainment. It's a decision to feel successful now. Yeah. And then to do what needs to be done to take you to that next level. So when we change our perception, increase our identity and ambition, and that changes our belief systems. I believe we reclaim our purpose. We can live more purposefully. I also think that for those people that consistently do this work, the purpose becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And then that then turns into like this, um, this fire of passion that you just cannot put out. Mm. Even on your darkest days, if you can go, why am I doing this? And you remember that, you know, I've got some clients that, incredible clients that are um, mothers of autistic children. Wow. And they're, the wisdom that they have gained from mm -hmm. learning how to manage this relationship and how they've had to learn to communicate and how they've had to learn to self-care 
and how they've had to learn to ask for help, right? They're so fired up about helping other parents experience some kind of emotional freedom from that as well. You know, so that kind of lights them up. And I, and I do believe that we allow ourselves to really step into that purpose. And then the final thing for me is being totally, I don't even think okay is the right word, fired up by taking that purpose and passion and turning it into a profit. Mm. Right? Because right back at episode one, I talked about the, the guy in the news recently who's just paid off like the whole college or the whole graduation year's worth of student loans. Yeah. I want to do that. <laughs> right? <laughs> I yeah. want, you know, whatever, whatever it is, who would, if you had, or when you have a gargantuan bank account, where could you see yourself giving back and making a huge difference in the world? I would plant a million trees and help to regenerate more of New Zealand's bush. Oh, I love that. I love that, right? And, and also, just in terms of your love and your innate belief in healing our body from the inside out, mentally, yeah. emotionally, physically, spiritually, right? You know, just imagine that you could facilitate, um, you know, teaching some of this to people on a scholarship basis right mm. and helping people that are in underdeveloped countries to get a skill that they can make money for the mm. game changer for me and i wish i had the book out in front of me and i don't was i was reading napoleon hills think and grow rich and oh, he yeah. said, your job is not to get rich to feed the poor your job is to get rich to show the poor how to do the same oh nice game changer right yeah. so i think it's about that facilitation of what profit can do and it's okay. In fact, it's, it's necessity for you to, to make that profit from what you're passionate about. If you've got the opportunity to do that and you've had the courage to step away from the mundane or the nine to five or whatever it is, and you've had the courage to come out and do this on your own, then you better bloody be making sure you're getting paid well for it as well, because that's mm -hmm. where the difference happens. But so the, as, profit, the bigger why. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, you don't even need to be hundred percent clear on that right now, but just know that with a bigger impact, a bigger income, you make a way bigger impact, you know, bigger, yeah. bigger bank account, bigger difference. Um, yeah. And you can also so buy more. Right now, maybe focus on creating a business that's sustainable so you can sustain your message. Exactly. And, and also is coming back to our own human needs, um, you know, with the horrific amount of crap that goes into food these days, you know, mm. wanting to buy organic food and wanting to get products that you put on your skin that are you know that are vegan that are not chemical based you know learning yeah. and being able to go on to retreats getting your kids and your family private health care that's okay to want to do that first <laughs> yeah you know, and to sustain that so as we start to wrap up we wanted to talk like we say about how it's a work in progress and we talked a little bit about how you've gone through that process yourself and seeing that and we'd like to now share with you the cards that we picked for today, which did make us mm. chuckle somewhat. <laughs> um, the card that I picked out was the card of um, patience. And it's a beautiful card. The lady's clearly uh, heavily pregnant and it's got all the cycles of the moon. We're going to take pictures that we will share with you in the email so you can see it for yourself. But this card says, there are times when the only thing to do is to wait. The seed has been planted and the child is growing in the womb. The oyster is coating the grain of sand and making it into a pearl. And this card reminds us that now is a time when all that is required is to simply be alert, patient and waiting. Um, this woman pictured here is just, has just the attitude. Contented, with no trace of anxiety, she is waiting. She's in the slipstream of alignment, isn't she? Mm -hmm. um, she's not sleepy or indifferent. She knows it is time to be ready for something momentous. It is a time full of mystery, like the hours just before the dawn. It is a time when the only thing to do is wait. So she's just letting this thing sort of germinate and birthing this whole new identity. This is what I feel is, is, is the message. And, but that takes some traits and your card to go with that, which was what? Strength. <laughs> it takes a lot of strength to be patient, speaking it, from somebody who's not naturally patient <laughs> yeah me neither me neither and also it takes strength to um defy the status quo it takes strength to um speak where other people don't want to speak yeah be you your know. natural self takes strength 
Yeah, and it takes strength actually to allow evolution. So, um, you know, between sort of 2016 and 2018, Oh my God, I changed my branding and my, and my, my superficial message and, and lo lots of other stuff several times because there was a shedding. And each time I revealed another layer, the passion that I spoke with became even more evident. And mm. I had to be, if I'd have believed that I had to just stick to that message for the next 20 years, or I'd picked my colors and now I had to stick with them, or my community would bugger off because it kept changing my mind, it wasn't, it was... Okay, it was like I'm getting a, you know when you, you know when you suck helium out, helium out of a balloon and your voice goes really funny. Yeah. Right. It it was a little bit like that in the terms of that the message was all really kind of like discombobulated and unclear, but as yeah. the beliefs fell down and the power showed itself, the message got much clearer and much louder, and it, it was it was like it was coming through a different vacuum. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 yeah totally. Um, so, you know, it does take time. Anything else that you can kind of just advise people on to help them really on that journey? Be gentle with yourself. Mm. It's a good one. Yeah. Particularly from a point of view when you've seen, when you've transitioned through that and come out of the other side. And, and, and again, we do still dip back, but it's really easy to get so fired up that you know you you don't give yourself that time to stop and to sit back and to see it as a process you know you weren't created you weren't created this way overnight and it's going to take some time to unravel that um, mm. and to trust in that journey and i think i shared to you just before we started that a mastermind that i'm in one of the guys said the best thing they heard in 2018 was when brendan said the reason most people will fail is because they're too attached to the timeline of their success and if they just allowed success to be an ongoing process, they could relieve themselves of so much pressure and actually realize that the journey is the important thing. Because actually the destination is forever moving. The destination mm. is never an end point. It just keeps going. Um, so as we wrap up... An organic process. Oh, I like that. I like that. So Tracy, could you just tell people that when they receive their next email, what is it that you're going to help them with in your free exercise? So the exercise that I am gifting to you, my lovely listeners, is um, a process that's going to help you to check in with um, the level of permission you are giving yourself to be your natural, authentic, powerful self. And I am going to take you on a guided visualization that's going to help you to increase your permission levels. I love that. What about you, Louise? What are you going to give them? I, oh, just magic. Um, I'm going <laughs> to do, uh, I, I want to just say beforehand, I've done a couple of sessions with Tracy and they are beyond, beyond phenomenal. Um, I experience a shift every single time, even when she's done them when I'm sleeping, when she's, when she's <laughs> um, yeah, so I it's just, first. you do first, <laughs> but it was uh, that was phenomenal. Um, I'm going to share a timeline therapy session, um, similar in the respect that it it will feel like a sort of a guided meditation visualization um, scenario, but actually it's guiding you back or your subconscious back to a time when you birthed a limiting belief that has been holding you back. Um, mm -hmm. I truly believe that this is one of the pivotal game-changing points for me when I got introduced to this. Um, and I did it when I was on my training course and things really started to unravel. So um, you're going to get those come out in the, in the last email of the series. Um, and, but it's been a joy, hasn't it? It's been wonderful. As always, it's been loads of fun. And I've learned a few new things too. So, hey, that's cool. Yes, and we hope you have as well. Um, we will be doing more of these. Um, obviously, on the bottom of the email, you can find out where you can find us on social media. Um, we would love for you to let us know how you've enjoyed the series. Give us a bit of feedback. Um, that's always, always appreciated. Um, and hopefully, we'll be able to check in with you again soon. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, until then... Check out your emails for your last, um, your last exercises and we'll see you again some other time. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? If our conversation spoke to you today, could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? 
Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.